Hello everyone. Thank you for joining in. Let's begin. It's good to have so many people in the call. Today we are going to discuss how to use Outlook more effectively and you'll be surprised at what you may find in the session. There's a quick introduction of what I do. Many of you may already know me, but for those who are new, just have a quick look. I'm not going to read everything out. As you know, we are doing these sessions. This is the eighth session in the series. We are covering all the products from Office 365. Today we are going to cover Outlook and we have covered Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote earlier. So what are we going to do? Lot of topics very quickly. Don't try to do it while I'm showing you. This session will be recorded and the recording will be available very soon. In the meantime, while I'm showing you stuff, if you have questions, please post the questions. There is a small little icon on the corner which looks like a speech bubble. Click on that and put your questions and put the question or slide number if required. Now all of us have one common ambition. Doesn't matter which industry, what is your role? All of us want growth. I am sure you'll agree with me. Another common factor is all of us have shortage of time. So obviously when time is in short supply, what you should be doing is utilize that time more effectively. That's a no brainer. So how do we utilize the time more effectively? The logical thing is. We have to do some kind of time management, some kind of task management, and that's what we are going to do today. When you come to office every day, what is the first product you start? I'm sure it is Outlook and where do you go there? We go to inbox and we go to calendar. Now remember we want to use the time intelligently. We have time in short supply. We know that, but I'm still reiterating it. You'll realize why. What can you do in a in, a, in an inbox? Only two things. You can either send a mail or you can reply to someone's mail. So remember your work is important. If you do your work well, then you will fulfill your JD and the chances of you exceeding the JD is higher. That means you will grow. So my work means I send a mail, reply to someone, I'm doing their work. Same way in calendar. Either I need some inputs from someone, I call for a meeting, people attend. That's my work. And if I attend a meeting someone else has called for, then obviously it is their work. So now look at what happens. Think about how many mails you have sent versus how many mails you have replied to. Which one is bigger? Same way, how many meetings you called for versus how many meetings you attended? And it typically looks like this. So in short, what are we doing? I'm doing my work and others work, yes, but the proportion of my work I'm doing is significantly smaller than the proportion of work I'm spending helping others. I'm not saying don't help others because if you don't reply to others, obviously they are not going to reply to you, but not at the cost of your work. So that's called inefficiency. That doesn't matter whether it's Outlook or Gmail or Yahoo. The concept is a problem. Whose work are we focusing on? It should be your work first and then by all means you can help others. Now the question arises, when do you do your work? And the answer is between meetings. No problem, that's how life is. Whether meeting is at home, online, remote, doesn't matter. We have a lot of meetings and whatever gaps we get, we hope to do our work, no problem. So now let's take an example. I've come out of this meeting between 10.30 and 11, I have a half an hour slot. I need to choose what is the best use of that half an hour. Of course, I have a list of my work to be done, pending work or a task list. The question is, where is that task list? And unfortunately, there is not a single place. Even if at individual level, you may have multiple places where your tasks are scattered. And because of that, if you have half an hour and your work list itself is in 20 places, do you have time to sort it, filter it, prioritize it? Absolutely not. So what do you do? You think, oh, my list is scattered all over the place. I can't go and look at all of them. That itself will waste half an hour. So what do I do now? I go to the fastest access. 
which one of these is the fastest access? And think about it a little. Don't think mobile. Mobile needs power and internet, whatever. The fastest access is mind. What does that mean? We are all ambitious. We have shortage of time. And then when it comes to deciding what to do with that time, which should be an intelligent decision, we do whatever comes to our mind. So for those who understand Hindi, ambition to bada hai, lekin kaam karne ka time aagaya, to man mein jo aega karte hai, which is called inefficiency. So in order to solve that problem, what is the root cause? The pending work is scattered. What is the solution? That also is obvious. Keep all the work in a single place. And surprisingly, the recommended place for keeping a master list of your work is not a subjective decision. It, you don't decide that. You need to find a place which is amenable to becoming a master task list. And that place is the tasks folder in Outlook which is comparatively rarely used. Everyone goes to an inbox and calendar. Very few people go to task folder. So I strongly recommend create a master list of all the work in task folder. Go to task folder. What you see is not the task folder, by the way. That's called a to do list. The second one is the task folder, which may be empty today. Don't bother. It's OK. We can fill it up now onwards. Whichever work comes to your mind, someone gives you the work. Someone sends it on WhatsApp. It comes as a word document in minutes of meeting. Doesn't matter where the word originates. The work originates. Put it in the task folder. It's as simple as going to the task folder, typing the task and putting the due date. That's all. There is a new task button upstairs, but don't use that. That's a lengthy way of doing it. Once you have a master list, you can also categorize it. These are called color categories up to 25 colors. You choose what to call each color. That is step one. That is not the end point. That is just the beginning. Now, obviously, what is step two? You have to do the work. And unfortunately, to do the work, there is no technology available in the world. But to do the work, you need time. And to block time, there is a technology available called calendar. Right now, our work is in task folder. It is not in calendar. So now we need to do put two and two together. So second step is open the calendar. Also open the task list by right clicking on task and say new window. Now we have two windows open and then at least important work which you have drag drop onto calendar. That way you're blocking time to ensure that you do the work on or before the deadline. That is a very good way of managing your time proactively. So what I just did is added a task to a calendar. I did not put the task itself in calendar. That is a mistake most people do. They use calendar like a task that doesn't work because if you forget to do the task on in this case Monday, whatever it is on Tuesday, you're not going to remember in this case. Even if you don't end up doing it on Tuesday, this task is still visible in your task folder. So now bottom line when you come to Outlook, go to task folder first because that is 100% your work. Then go to inbox and calendar, monitor it effectively and you are on a better path of execution. So what we just did just now, which is take an appointment with yourself to do your own work may sound funny, but that is the simplest and most practical way of doing time management. Think about it a little, try it out for a couple of weeks and it will become a second nature to you. All right. Now, lot of work you have to delegate depending on your position, but it has nothing to do with seniority or otherwise. Sometimes some work you have to manage, some work you have to get done from someone. How do you delegate? That is the next thing. Typically, we delegate by sending a mail saying do this on this date. You're going to forget it. You are going to forget to follow up on the deadline. Otherwise, you are creating a separate Excel sheet to monitor and you forget to open the Excel sheet. So it's a disaster. Delays will happen like this. So delegation should be with more accountability and better ability from your point. You should use tasks for delegation. In this case, you go to task folder again, click on the new task button, and then there is a very important button there called assign task. This is where you decide who is the actual person who is going to delegate the work. So it will give you a two box like an email, but this is a task, not an email. So put the name of the person, put the subject, always put a deadline and 
remember what happens. Whatever happens after sending this task, that party may not act on it at all, but a copy of this task is going to remain in your task folder as well. So unlike the email which lies in sent items, which you never go to, this task is going to be visible to you in your task folder as well. So even if the other party sleeps over it, you can work on it. So now what happens? The other person gets it as a task request. They can say accept or decline, and there is the entire workflow. When that person marks it as accept, it becomes a task in that person's task folder. When that person marks it as complete, you will be notified and the equivalent task in your task folder is also marked as complete. Now you are in a much better way to manage stuff. Now the next topic is how do you monitor delegated work? Because in your task folder, it's a mixture of your work and delegated work. No problem. Go to the view tab, click on the assigned view and then you will see a nice view which is excellent for monitoring. It groups it by person and shows you all the work by person. Then you can monitor better. So now we are on a much better path for better execution. Now that task folder has become very important in your life. You need to see tasks on your mobile as well, and that is where the to do app comes into picture. It's available on Android and iOS. Just install the app login. It will sync Outlook tasks into this app. It's very easy to use. You can also use it for simple shopping list, checklists and all kinds of things. So if you have never done it before, immediately after this session, install the to do app, start using tasks. Now few nice things. Many of us work across different countries, so we can actually have multiple time zones in calendar. Some of you may know it, but many people have not noticed it. How do you do it? Just right click on that time. Go to time zones and set the time zones. That's all there is to it. This is very useful for arranging appointments based on convenience of the customer or the other party. If you don't have this, you are going to some browser based applications to convert time and stuff like that, which is cumbersome and inefficient as well. All right, now taking notes. We do a lot of meetings. How do we take notes? We take notes using paper, all kinds of things, and then we can't find them. The correct way of taking notes is in such a way that the notes are linked to the calendar. So go to calendar, right click on the meeting, then choose meeting notes. A detailed version of this has already been covered in the one note session, which we did a couple of days back. You can see the video for more details. Now it will ask you which notebook do you want to put it in? Choose the notebook. It creates a nice new page inside OneNote, and that page is automatically linked to that particular meeting. Even if you did notes on paper, you can take a photograph of that paper, put it here and still your notes get linked. So it's very nice and useful. If you have the latest version of Office and Office 365, artificial intelligence can help you. Microsoft has an algorithm which behind the scenes is monitoring what you are doing and it actually gives you very nice insights. If you see whenever you open a mail, look at the home tab, the right side most button will be insights. When you open it, it gives you many things. Even if you have not added something as a task, but it implies a task, it flags it here. I have said, let's have a meeting day after tomorrow, but I did not put it as a task. So it's saying follow up on your request. And there are 11 other people where I have mentioned something which sounds like there needs to be a follow up, but I have not formally put it as a task. So this applies AI to understand the way you communicate with people and discovers useful things from it. It also helps you plan focus time. You can have half an hour focus time at the time of your choice and then it improves your concentration and minimizes distractions. So that is insights. If you have not done it before, have a look at it. This insights thing can also send you a weekly report giving you more ideas about how to optimize your time and your tasks. Now the most important topic is when not to use Outlook. So this sounds like a very complex chart. As of now, the chart cannot be fully explained because other products we have not covered, but just remember Outlook should be used lesser and lesser in today's world. So forget the gray part. Look at the colored part. When you have to communicate with others, 
only if it is ad hoc work which is not urgent then you use outlook send a mail hope that people will reply that is the only purpose outlook should serve today for all other objectives in terms of communicating with others there are better suited products available why am i showing this this is to do because we are going to manage our tasks definitely using outlook and to do app on the mobile so that is how outlook has a much more limited role earlier outlook was the only method of communication other than sending paper by courier but now things have changed and we also have to change our behavior accordingly now this is not a topic i'm going to cover but if you are from it i i hope you have already enabled these features safe links and safe attachments because even today after IT being there for 30 years, the commonest vector from which viruses come is infected links and infected attachments. Whatever amount of user education you do does not work. People still click and open. So Microsoft Office 365 has a feature called safe links and safe attachments, where even if the link is infected, even if the attachment is infected, even if you don't have an antivirus installed, it will not harm you. So if you have not done that before, do it. And for confidential stuff, we have a technology called IRM, which gives you a button called do not forward. So if you send a mail to someone with do not forward, copy paste is disabled, screenshots are disabled, and the forward button is disabled. This is used for confidential reasons. OK, so that's all we have time for. Uh, few things I'm going to mention. I know I have exceeded time, but there are a few things which are just worth mentioning. I'm not going to talk in detail. So I call them hidden gems. Simple ways of making your email communication more effective. Everyone sends black emails to each other. Please use color that makes it more interesting. Does not cost you anything, but it is more effective. If you are sending a mail to someone which has a lot of questions, what is going to happen? That person is going to click on reply and after every question they are going to press enter and say my answers are in line and then you're scrolling and struggling. If that is the case, create a table in first column, put your question, second column people can reply. Much more simple structure. Hyperlinks everyone knows, but what you don't know is if you use styles, then if you are writing a long email, within the email you can create hyperlinks. So select something, insert hyperlink, place within the document, then it shows you headings in the mail and it becomes easier to navigate long emails. Why is it important? Because the longer the email, the lesser are the chances people are going to use it or read it fully. The next one is send links. We saw that in very great detail yesterday with OneDrive. Start sending links instead of attachments. See the video yesterday to understand detail. Repair subject is common sense. Very often someone puts you in CC, there is subject X, and then you're saying reply, reply to all, add someone to CC. By the time the subject has changed, but nobody bothers to change the subject. So simple best practice, whenever you are replying, just look at the subject, check is it relevant. If not, change the subject to what it should be in the current context. Mail tips is a default feature, but nobody reads it. There are yellow bars on top which says you're attaching a file and sending the mail to someone and that person is out of office. Why are you sending that mail? So many common mistakes which happen after sending the mail can be prevented if you just read those mail tips. Close all windows. I'm sure you have faced this before. Suddenly at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, there are 20 email windows open, 20 calendar windows open and machine becomes slow. So in view tab, there is a nice little button called close all items. This is an Outlook feature. It closes all unnecessary Outlook windows, emails, calendars, cars, everything. If something is not saved, it will not close them. So don't worry. Very nice way to declutter your desktop. And lastly, this is something maybe all of you require, but nobody has noticed. In calendar, you can control click on individual days and you get a custom sort of calendar view. So notice 3, 7, 13, 15, 28, Random days I have selected. In fact, you can do across two months by just control click. So these are some simple effective hidden gems. So now I'm going to actually stop and help you ask questions. So if you have any questions, please ask. Mention the slide number if required. 
and Zeus is going to help us read out the questions. First question is, yeah, how to improve the search functionality of your inbox sent mails? I usually go to my Gmail business account and search for old mails. So if you have configured Gmail in Outlook, you you can do all kinds of searching in Outlook because you asked the question. Let me try to show you that quickly. Let me get my Outlook on screen here. All right, so now. Depending on which version of Outlook you have, the search text box may be in the title bar or it may be somewhere here. It doesn't matter. What matters is when you click on the search box, a separate menu comes called search. Most people don't look at that menu. That is the first mistake. When you go to search, yes, click here, but don't type anything. First, define the scope. Am I searching in current folder or all items? or all Outlook items. This is the commonest mistake because typically you are searching in the current folder, but it is searching over the mailbox, so you get too many results. Another thing is even if you may not remember exactly when the date on which that mail came, maybe you remember when it came approximately. Maybe you remember when. Uh, what was the did it have an attachment? So when you go to this search box, at least to remember the search text was in subject or body, so refine the search. For example, if I remember that it was in subject and if you click on subject, then it gives you the syntax. You don't have to remember the syntax. Now the search will be more precise. And uh, if sometimes you believe that you don't remember anything of these, then what are you searching? Come on, some of it you have to remember. Refine the search as much as possible for improving precision and speed. One common problem is sometimes you know the email is there, but search is not able to search for it. What do you do then? Again, go here, go to search tools, click on indexing status. By default, this guy should show you nothing is remaining to be indexed. Zero items remaining should be what happens. If there is a large number there, that means something has happened. Upgrade has happened, laptop has changed, so Outlook has not been able to look at all the emails you have. So leave the machine on overnight and morning it should be zero. Then your search accuracy will be good. So that's quickly about how to optimize search. The concept remains the same, whether it's a exchange mailbox or Gmail mailbox. Next question, how to configure security in Outlook? OK, so Outlook security is something a user cannot configure beyond a point. It is an IT level question, so probably we'll have to do a separate uh, session for that because it's technical, but at IT level, a lot of security is already there. But the new features like safe links, safe attachments and IRM are very important, and the other feature which you should be worried about now is called sensitivity so let me try to show you that as well which is categorization or sensitivity labels as it is called this also requires configuration to be done by it it's, there is hardly anything you can do in the context of outlook security at individual user level next question yeah Linked notes to meeting. Please yeah. explain one more time. OK, so let me try and see if I can show you a quick demo. So I have a calendar. I am in this meeting. I want to take notes about this meeting, so I go to the meeting and then I right click on the meeting. Just give me a second. So I right click on the meeting choose meeting notes and just follow the prompts. This will invoke one note. It will create a new page in one note. That new page in one note is better than a new page on your paper diary or a new document in Word because that page gets automatically linked to that meeting. So whatever in notes you take there, six months later you want to find the notes. You go to the calendar entry, right click, choose the same option called meeting notes and now Outlook will find the notes for you. That is how linked notes works. A detailed demo has been shown and discussion is there 
already in just the, the one note session we did a couple of days back. Next question, where is the insight option? Good question. So when you create open a mail. Let me try to do that. You go to inbox. You open a particular mail. Let me go to something and open a mail. Yeah, on the home tab insights, so it will give you all the AI based insights it has found from the way you use Outlook. These insights obviously will be different from person to person and even for you next month or next week or even tomorrow the insights may change. Next question is regarding something which you just showed. It is very difficult to search old emails. Sometimes emails hide. What I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know what you mean by emails hide, but uh, uh, I just explain how search has to be done more comprehensively by refining it by using the search toolbar better. So that should solve this problem. Next question. Sending link of my file shows the entire path of my OneDrive, which I don't want others to know what to do. Mm, I don't think there is a way to solve that problem because if it has to go to OneDrive, it has to show the whole path. Sorry. I don't know of any way of hiding or obfuscating that path. Of course, you can shorten the URL, but when you click on the URL, it's going to get unshortened anyway. Next question. Is there inbuilt ability in Outlook where we can download attachments from many emails in one go? Uh, there is mm, there used to be. But I'll tell you the right answer. If you want multiple attachments to be downloaded to a single folder, there is a reason why you are doing that. You are not randomly selecting mail. There is a filter condition for which you are doing it. If that is the case, then you should use flow or now it is called power automate. For example, I'll give you a situation. Let's say you have floated an RFP or asked for quotation from vendors and 20 vendors are going to reply to that mail and they are going to attach the proposal as attachment. You don't want to waste time finding those 20 mails and manually save as save as 20 times. If that is the scenario, then use Power Automate. It can look at your inbox. You can define the search criteria and then it can detach the emails and put them wherever you say either in OneDrive or Teams. If you don't have Power Automate, then the only option is to create a rule, but again that has some limitations. The most comprehensive option is programming, but that's not something everyone can do, and I wouldn't recommend that as well. Next question. How to search within the email ID? How to search within the email ID? I don't understand the question. So oh, you mean there are multiple email IDs and you want to search within them? I guess you click there and search. I don't know if there appear humongous number of email IDs. Yes, I know it is a problem. In fact, that's a bad practice. If you're putting too many email IDs in two or CC, first of all, you're confusing people, you're spamming them, and sometimes it may be a privacy issue as well. This I don't know of any method of searching specifically in two. Next question. Yep. How to back up IMAP e emails? Like any other thing, just say export, file export, and it will save it as PST. Uh, user color and outlook, could you please elaborate? Ah, all I mean is if you are sending a mail to someone, all the emails and all the replies to emails use font color black. So just change the color, use a darker blue, use a purple. Don't make it gaudy, but if you are highlighting something, why just keep it black font? Just there are lots of colors there. I'm not saying use all of them, but just make your mails little more interesting by adding the right dash of color. That's all I mean, font color. 
in this case. Next question is to do and task link to Google Home or Alexa? Uh, no, not to my knowledge. Alexa may be. Uh, I have not tried, but probably someone has done it already, but I, I don't know of it. Next, Ravi says, thanks. If possible, please conduct session on security. Sure, I will. Uh, next, could you please show us how to create a mail template or a standardized reply? Sure, that's quite easy. So let's say you get emails from people and you're replying to them. So let me. So because it's a template, you should keep only things which are common across multiple instances like any other template. So avoid putting two, but let's say in this particular thing, this is a service request and you want people see your boss to be always a part of it. So I'm saying boss will always be there and then. Uh, let's say it's an acknowledgement. We have received. And we are working on it. So whatever is the standard reply now you don't want to send it. You want to save it as a template. So what do you do? You go to file file save as in save as you go to save as type. Don't save it as MSG. Then it's a message. You use it as Outlook template. Now notice right now my current folder is this PC documents. The moment you choose templates, what happens? It changes to templates folder. You may or may not want that because you want your template to be quickly accessible to you. So you can create your own folder called templates if you find it useful and then save the file there. Next time you double click on the file, the template opens. You fill in the blanks and send it. That's how it works. Why am I showing this method? Because if I save the template in the default template directory right now, I'm doing that. Just remember this is called acknowledgement template. Now I don't need to save this because I've saved the template. Now next time I need the template and it is in the templates directory, it's a little irritating to open that template. That's why I'm saying create your own known folder which is easy to navigate to and do it. So here is how I have to do it from the default template folder. New item, then I have to go to more items, then I have to go to choose form, then it takes a long time, a dialogue comes, I have to open this drop down and then I have to go to user templates in file system and then finally I'll find it. So it's a little lengthy, so save it in some folder. Double click on it. Job done. Uh, I don't know. If my he's repeating. Visible, but yes, uh, his, his screen is visible. Uh, repeating the question, uh, how to make search within email IDs possible? Yeah, so. I think replied to it already. So if you are saying I want to get a mail who was who has been sent to me or I was in CC something like that, then what do you do? OK, I understand now. So from is here. Now if you say add more fields, there are multiple types of fields available here. So let me just try to show you. So there are multiple types of fields available. Some of them are shown here. Some of them are not shown. If you click on more, then you should get a list. I don't know why I'm not getting a list. Let me try it again in focused. I don't know. There is a long list of items here which should have two and CC as well. So yes, it is possible. Search for that button in the more of search toolbar. That's the answer. Next question. What to do if the other person deletes the task that I've assigned to him? That's what I said. So if you are sending a mail, then neither are you following nor is that person acting. So both ways you are stuck. If it is a task which is delegated, forget about the other person delegating the task. That person doesn't notice it also. Obviously they are not going to work on it. Bottom line, the other person doesn't do anything. Agreed, that's a problem. That is why a copy of that task is visible to you in your task folder. And now that we are using task folder as the 
master list of our life because our execution, our life, our ability to deliver what is in the JD and exceed it. That means our growth depends on the task folder. We are going to monitor task folder actively at least twice a day. So you will notice that delegated task which is either getting delayed or about to get delayed and you will follow up, delegate it to someone, fire that guy, whatever it is. Next question. How to sync all folders including sent folder using POP? Yeah, same thing works for POP3. But I would suggest in today's world as far as possible, avoid using POP3 and IMAP. If you have a choice, use IMAP because that gives you better sync. POP3 absolutely syncs all folders including sent items. You may have to configure it, but yes, technically possible. Uh, someone has given us, Basant has given a suggestion that uh, possibly Narendra's search email is limited due to exchange account settings. Maybe they need to make it to unlimited days. Possible, yeah. I don't, and, uh, I, I, I don't understand what is said. Let me just read. Which question are we talking about this? This but, is Basant's question posted at 3.37.31. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there is a limit, but yeah, check it with IT. Is there a limit on number of the from what I understand, whatever mailboxes are in your current Outlook profile, all those mails are indexed. There is no filter on what days and what probably Basant is talking about is when you go to mailboxes and configure it, uh, there is an OST file or a local version of the file created. Now in that particular situation, what happens is, for example, I have multiple mailboxes here and I can choose how long this should be done in the sense how many mails I want to download. If I have only downloaded one month mails, obviously it's going to search in the mails in the one month, but that's not true because if it doesn't find it in the current local storage, which is the OST file, it will tell you server search. So it may be a two step process, but you will see that there is an option there. All right, Chai Chandra has uh, clarified his question. He said, actually I have 500 email IDs in inbox and each ID has 1000 emails. Hence how to find or do a search. Can we assign color for a person? Red color yes. for MD, etc. Absolutely, you can assign that. You have to go to Outlook rules and let me see if I can show you that. Just give me a second. So if you go to inbox and if you go to rules, you can create very, very sophisticated kind of rules. Now in rules, there are two options create rule and manage rules. The more comprehensive dialogue comes in manage rules. So when you go to manage rules and then you say new rule, typically you start from a blank rule. So apply to messages when I receive blank rule. This gives you maximum flexibility. So here you can put where, whether it came from someone, whether it was sent only to me, whether my name is in two box, whether what are all kinds of things are here. So here you can put the person's name and then next step. So assume for the time being I'm saying sent only to me, but you can use the other one. Now how do you color it? That is why you use assign it to a category. When you choose a category, as I said, there are 25 colors to choose from. You can customize them. So for example, if I say if the mail is only sent to me, then I want to call it high priority. No problem. Then click OK, click next, click next, and then it will apply it. You have to retrospectively apply it manually, prospectively it will get applied automatically. So yes, that can be done using rules. Next question. How can we use Outlook as a data collection such as filling form and submit? 
Yeah, so data collection forms are available for a long time in Outlook, but in today's world, I would strongly suggest those are Outlook dependent and they may not work on browser at all. So use Microsoft Forms or some similar tool because when you're collecting data, you don't want it to be hard coded to a particular tool. So use some kind of forms tool. If it needs to be integrated with Outlook and with your staff with Active Directory, then forms is the best option. If you have a more complex form, then you can use Power Apps. Your data may remain in Excel or SharePoint, but you can create a very well designed form with all kinds of UI sophistication using Power Apps. If you want a simplistic form, use Forms. Next question. Can we link Google Calendar? I think so, yeah. So once you configure your Google account, Calendar will get configured as well. So you'll see multiple calendars there. Uh, Narendra says he's from IT and his users are facing an issue. They are unable to search their email. Yeah, so Narendra, I suggest you go to those specific desktops and check the indexing status. Indexing service may not have indexed all the emails or the index may have got corrupted, in which case you have to rebuild it. So you have to go to indexing options and say rebuild if that is the case. There is a hotfix also which can do it automatically. There are no more questions as of now. All right. So while we wait for some questions, let me go through the PPT. There's another question. OK. For MS forms, when I share to outside organization, it disallows to upload files. Is there any solution to it? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, if you really want a solution, then we have to use something else. Uh, Mehul has a question. Can people outside organization use Power Apps? No, not as of now. But if you have a Power App, you can export it as a template. Someone on the other side can do it. And if you have Azure B2B configured properly, then I think there is a way to use Power Apps. But if you just send it to random public, no. So this is the schedule. We have many more sessions coming up, same time, same place. The videos will be available on this link, bit.ly corona dd pl, pl for playlist. This will be on my Efficiency 365 YouTube channel. If you have not visited it, do visit it. There are a lot of good content there. And if you want to read all the Outlook articles I've written on my blog, there are 75 plus actually, much more than that. Outlook KKP. I must thank Shesham, Manindo and Zias for helping me in this venture. We have been working hard to make this happen as smoothly as possible, despite all the bandwidth constraints and all the things which are going on today. So thank you, Shesham, Manindo and Zias. Uh -huh. When there is a meeting request is accepted and you send a response to the host, email gets deleted. What to do? Meeting request does not get deleted when you send a response. What happens is when you get an email meeting request and you respond to it, it goes to calendar and in order not to clutter your inbox, the item in inbox gets deleted. That is by design. If you want, you can go to tools options and configure that should not happen. So thank you again. Bye bye.